huge opportunities in front of us this week. Uh, you know, I think last year we set uh, set the attendance record at, at the Cole Center, and I think this one is going to be a higher number than, than that in Fiserv, so we're certainly excited about uh, that opportunity, but going on the road. Uh, there and then uh, uh, another huge match on on the road against uh, a Florida team that's been uh, crushing a lot of the the top teams in the country come out of the gate and so a uh, huge opportunity in front of us this week certainly uh, we're going to learn a, a lot about ourselves heading uh, at, at the end of this. Kelly you saw the Nebraska um, fan f fiasco a couple weeks ago. Now with you guys going up to Milwaukee, what does it mean for volleyball to have these big interstate rivalries being just blown and put in huge arenas? Uh, what's it say about the state of volleyball and what it means for states to be um, kind of cross-promoting the schools? Well, the sport's never been in a better place than what it is right now. It's, uh, you, you know, when you talk about the, the television coverage that's been increasing the past couple years and, and um, you know, coaching staffs and, and administrations that are, are looking to stretch it out, uh, you know, g games and, and larger arenas and or football fields. Um, you know, and the, f the fans have been answering. You know, I think, uh, uh, you, you know, it's uh, the, the growth and, and the potential is, is really exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, there's... Uh, uh, it's 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 fun the direction that we're heading. I'll put it that way. Kelly, um, you know it's only been like maybe the last five six years or so that this rivalry with Marquette is really resumed on a regular basis. And I guess I'm wondering what, why, from your perspective, <coughs> it's been important to make this a a yearly, pretty much a yearly yearly match. Uh, the the teams are too good and too close not to play each other. I've got a lot of respect for for Ryan and and uh, uh, the, uh, the the growth of their program. You know, it, it's but we're also you know the, there's the, there's an element of you know the most important thing is is our team and our program. And number one, it's 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 a good team. Uh, right down the road for our our program, so I w we want to play him. But there's also an element of of can you can you continue to grow the sport and and um, you know this is great for the fans. It's great for the club kids to to, to watch. I mean, we've had some battles. We've come out uh, 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 probably ahead a few more times than they have, but the matches have been incredible and the the environment and. And uh, the atmosphere has been fantastic. I mean, it's it's you know I don't think it, it does either team any good to to uh, duck the other one. And, um, and you know it's I think it's a win win for both of us. It's a win win for the for the fans and and um, and, and it just makes sense. Sort of a two parter. You kind of alluded to the first part. I mean, you know, obviously. You know the Marquette match coming up this Wednesday. I mean, could you have ever imagined, you know, maybe five years ago that you know this wouldn't be the most highly attended volleyball match, you know, college volleyball match of the season? And you know, I mean, how do you, you know, you wind up, it, wind it, up in, the indoor year. college volleyball match? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but you know, I mean, you one upped it, one upped it this year. I mean, you know, do you have any vision of you know how it can keep on you know growing and growing each year? You know, just having one match like this, you know. Season after season. I, th I think that's the fun of being in this profession is continuing to push the envelope, to c continue to stretch, continue to see how good we, you can be in, in all all measures. I mean, it's how we approach everything. I mean, you know, how good can we be with this team this year? How good of a of a summer camp can we put on? How good of a uh, of a coach's clinic can you put on? How good can we be in social media or game environment? It's just continuing to to – to raise the bar, um, it, it, this fan base uh, in this state, the volleyball in this state, um, they, I mean, they just they show up no matter what you're doing. I mean, we we've done some spring matches around the state, and and it's you know they they all pack no matter where we're at. Those high school gyms are just jam packed with with long lines. It you know we put on a kids clinic and that thing sells out in minutes. It's just. It's uh, so this doesn't surprise me at all that we're 
what, 100 or 200 tickets uh, away from selling out. I'm not sure if it's exactly a sellout today, but I'm sure it will be come match time. Um, no, I, this, this doesn't surprise me at, at all, and, and hopefully both teams put on a show, and, and it's something that we continue to, to grow more, more fans out of it. Kelly, Arkansas set a, a program record for their attendance when you guys were there. Marquette could set one, but that's the expectation for, for the match later this week. Florida, you could do the same thing if, yeah. if we're looking at this in, in a realistic way. And we're ready, do you take pride in that? That you're an attraction like that? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. My the the first match I ever coached at as as a head coach, we had 13 fans in the stands. It's a uh, <laughs> you know, and most of it was from one family. And and afterwards, uh, the first thing our players did was it wasn't go talk to me. They ran up in the stands and got some brownies from the parents that were up there. It's um, I think everyone wants to be a part of big stuff, right? The fans do, the, the, the players certainly do, coaches do, media does, and, uh, um, the, you know, and, the, and we want to be a program that, that, um, the, that inspires uh, our fan base to, to, to cheer for us and, and be a level of team that uh, we're inspirational for our opponent's fan base that they, that they want to show up. And, you know, these should be two massive, rabid, matches in, in front of us and uh and i'm sure that that won't be the only one i'm sure that will continue throughout the year and and uh uh it's it's something that i i'm looking forward to seeing how our team responds in those environments moving to some on the court stuff i mean it's been rare early in the season for you to run the same lineup i guess in back-to-back -back match matches and you did thursday friday I yeah mean, is that something that you're settling on with you know Temi and Sarah, an outside hitter, and uh, you know uh, Yulia playing libero with Cool J kind of playing situationally a little bit. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a uh, y you know uh, w we'll get in the gym and uh, practice gym and, and kind of see. But it was a uh, you know I thought we looked a lot better in, in night two than than night one, uh, probably because of that familiarity with it. Um, you know, uh, both both outside hitters played six rotations. I thought our passing was was really really solid. Um, uh, both matches, uh, two very different types of teams with the tempo that they're running, and uh, we'll we'll see how we how we do this weekend. I mean, Marquette Marquette's uh, outside set that is by far the fastest that we've seen. I mean, it's uh, so I'm really interested to see how. How our block and D response responds to that, you know, Izzy Ashburn I think is uh, has an opportunity of getting a, a career record in service aces, and uh, she's done a really good job of getting us uh, off on the right foot. Thought MJ Hamill probably said as, as well this past week, and as she's ever had in her career, and the, the connections continue to get stronger and stronger. Um, but uh, I think the familiarity certainly, you know, with, with what we're doing, I think certainly helps whether we'll stay with that this week. Uh, again, not to try to be coy or something. Uh, if I were to be coy, then that would mean that I know what I'm doing right now. And, uh, and I don't, but, uh, but that's okay. Hey, Kelly. Uh, with Marquette floating around, you know, 25, 24 in that area, I mean, do you feel like it adds a spark to this rivalry that, that both teams are in such a good position of where they're at? You know, it's been kind of the norm for a while as both teams being ranked and, and both teams coming in playing really good competition. I mean, they've loaded up on – their win-loss record probably isn't what they would expect, but they haven't – ducked anybody it's uh they played some really uh, elite teams they've lost some really close matches against some uh, elite teams uh again we played each other in the spring and it was it's uh it, you know it was it was a battle um it's uh it, yeah i think it gives a little bit more cachet i guess a little bit if both teams are uh, are ranked and, and doing well and uh you know that was a team that uh, uh, I don't know where they. I think they were a Sweet 16 team last year that returns most of their players, and so it's an experienced team with one of the best setters in the game. And um, uh, you know, I would I would expect them to have a, a great season in conference as well. 
Kelly, when did you first feel like the haunted? When you were in your time here? The haunted. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a um, it, it's funny to hear that because uh, you know what what we're trying to do is we're trying to be on the attack. So I'm I'm trying not to you know, uh, be the one that is sitting there and, and other people are kind of coming at, coming at us. There was a, um, uh, there was a video clip that we'll show every once in a while that reminds me, I haven't done this in a few years, but of, of body language and it's, uh, it's, it's a Mike Tyson fight. And, uh, um, it's, it, uh, Oh, who who was the guy that came in that was undefeated at the time? Uh, Spinks. Spinks comes in and he's undefeated. Both boxers are undefeated. And he walks in and he gets out in the the rank. And then you see Tyson coming out and his his walkout song was just chains, <laughs> you know, just chains bang, banging it against each other. And he walks out there and both guys are undefeated, but you could tell one of them was just a caged tiger, just walking back and forth and back and forth and. Spinks, Spinks didn't look like he had, he'd never won in his life out there. He knew what was coming, and uh, Tyson comes right out of the corner and and knocks Spinks down, goes back to his corner, and he is out there charging before the you know to go clean it up before um basically before the 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 referee says go on out there and that image of just charging when you've got the opportunity to knock somebody out is something that we you know we talk about a lot is is on the tack so um we don't want to sit back and just think here somebody's hunting us I think a mentality of we want to be going and hunting them we use that word a lot hunt hunt defensively hunt uh go out there after after your people but um I think we've been a respected program for a while. Uh, Kelly, I guess I'm wondering, I'm, you, you have a, a handful of players who've been in these big arena type situations, be it last year or the national championship game, and you know, I don't, there might be some others too. But I guess I'm wondering, are you a big proponent of the experience factor? Does that make any difference in these unique type settings, do you think? Uh, <clears throat> we want to play in matches that matter uh, in the, on the biggest stages possible. And we want to do it as many times. Uh, I think that's why people come to Wisconsin, uh, is to play in big matches, big environments, big crowds, television. Uh, when the lights are the brightest, I think uh, any competitor wants to be a part of those situations. And... Um, uh, we played in a lot of them. Hopefully, we'll we'll continue to play in more and even bigger bigger places. Uh, but yeah, this week is certainly that. Kelly, I want to go back to the hunter thing. Um, can you recruit to that? Can you or what do you look for? You, you have to be a certain, a special type of athlete to to not rest on your laurels and and look at everything this program's accomplished. So how do you what do you look for in the recruiting process to make sure you've got Someone who can can do that. Look for, for people that have a an inner dri drive to do great things. Uh, that l love the game and uh, m meaning love the game, but you got to love the work. Uh, people that aren't excuse people. Uh, we're we're constantly. If you're somebody that is wired in a way that makes excuses, uh, then you're not leaning into to learning. You're not leaning into to greatness, and so. Uh, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of little cues that you can tell who really wants to be a part of those things and uh, who are prima donnas or um, fake competitors. For my research, this will be probably the largest women's sporting event in the state of Wisconsin. Can you just talk about how that shows the strength of volleyball in the state from the high school level all the way up to for even younger to the college level yeah it's uh i i, th I think uh uh gr girls volleyball is uh a, for the few years now has been the the biggest female team sport in in the country um you know it, 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 we go to these recruiting events and you just see 
I mean, it's just, it's incredible. You, you'll go to some of these and they'll be, have 200 courts. You know, if you kind of just do the math of, of four or five teams per, per pool for 200 courts and there's a morning wave and an afternoon wave, you can get the picture of how many people are going in and out of those two and three day tournaments. And in uh, Wisconsin's held, you, you know, continue to, to hold bigger and bigger tournaments as, as well. Um, yeah, to, to play in a uh, in a match that uh, should be the the biggest uh, female sporting event in in uh, in Wisconsin history. I mean, that's that's I mean, it's cool. It's it's unique. Uh, I'm not sure my vocabulary is good enough to to do it proper justice, but it's something that uh, we're excited about. Kelly, everybody wants to talk about Marquette, but you mentioned Florida is one of the hottest teams in the country right now. I mean, what have you seen from them that, that makes them unique and makes them so hard to defend? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, there's not a, a lot of matches, regular season matches where two of the top three teams ranked are, are going at each other. And, you know, they came here and played in front of one heck of a match in the Cole Center. Uh, we fell two points shy of, of being able to, to win that one. Um, you know, they, they've come out of the gates great. I mean, they, they beat, uh, I think, Penn State, that was number eight at the time, in four, uh, and then have swept Stanford and Minnesota. Uh, they may be the only team in the country that has swept two top five teams. Uh, they've done it with a, with a great setter, a really, really good setter, a great libero. And they've got a freshman, uh, Kennedy Martin, that has come in and is playing as well through the first uh, – Three weeks is probably anybody in the country uh, on, on the right side, and they've got a, you know, uh, middles that, that do their job really well. Their outsides are, are good. They run a really good system, and then uh, defensive specialists for days that are coming in, fighting, keeping the ball off the ground. And they they seem to, to do it with uh, with a lot of energy, as as all of Mary's teams do. So. Uh, the the team is legit. I I think they've done a great job. You, you think about some of the talent they lost. Merritt Beeson transferred to uh, uh, to Nebraska, and Bree Kelly transferred to uh, to Pittsburgh, and then uh, Luza Markova uh, uh, after uh, her career was done. I think she had the most kills on the, on the team. I mean that that may be their three best athletes, best attackers that have transferred or. or or been done, and for them to come out and with the young team and play as well as they have is, uh, I'm not sure even their most uh, supportive fans would would expect them to be playing at the level that they have right now. So it's uh, uh, Mary and, and, and Dave, their whole staff have done a great job of getting their team uh, playing the level they have so far. Yeah. Um, you know, UW is always seems like, uh, at least from a volleyball standpoint, you know, drawing real, real well in terms of, you know, crowds and things that have come to the field house. But I'm wondering, in, in your personal experience, you know, after you got here, I'm sure you saw those numbers. But what was maybe your personal experience where you just kind of, you were hearing, you're like, man, this this is a little different, or this, you know, you were maybe just a little in awe or surprised at just the amount of support and, and, and attention that you know this program can generate you, you know it's it's interesting because you know we, year one I, I think we got here in 2013 and uh, we were still top top three I think in attendance uh, uh, that year but there'd be some times that I walk out for warm-ups and I remember being uh, why are there more people here? I mean, it's still uh, really good, but I, I, you know, I just felt like this was on us as a, I felt a responsibility. That building is not full, then this is my fault. That I've got to do a better job of, of putting a product out there or getting the energy higher or uh, letting people know uh, uh, about our program. And so there were some disappointments, although we were right up there, because I just, I feel like that, that, that building should be full. Um, the, uh, you know, and then I, I, I remember not <laughs> another time, this might have been year two or something, Illinois students came in and they were dressed as Wisconsin fans and they, you know, 
midway through the first set or something, they take off their Wisconsin gear and have Illinois gear. And they were louder than our, than the rest of our fan base in there. And uh, I'm not sure 30 guys should be louder than, than the rest of the field house. Um, and uh, probably said some things after the match that I probably shouldn't have uh, with a microphone in front of me. Um, but uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure a whole lot of people were paying attention. I felt bad, but I never heard anything about it afterwards. So it tells you that there probably weren't a, a lot of people paying attention at, at, at that point. Um, you know, and then it's just grown. You, you, you get here and you'll see people waiting in line four or five, eight hours before a match. And you see the, the place, you know, the atmosphere inside of it all put up against anybody. Uh, on a night in, night out basis, uh, we'll go on the road and 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 uh, the fan base is is there. Uh, it's uh, it's it sounds different. Certainly, opening up the upper deck feels different when you've got those fans right on top of you down on the court. It is totally different, totally different with the upper deck full. And then probably nothing has been more important than having as many students show up as what we've done the last couple of years. I mean, you get. You know that end zone up there, packed all the way up to the to the roof. And uh, when you're down on the on the court, it's it's really hard to communicate uh, in a way that is effective without screaming. And um, uh, just the the growth has is just uh, really taken off. And I think it's made it a lot more fun for the people that come into the building. Last one. And a quick follow up. I mean, do you? I mean, I, it would only be, you know, projecting and guessing on your part. But do you think the UW faith, faithful will travel? It's a short, short ride. I mean, we know what UW Marquette men's and women's men's basketball is like when, we, when Marquette comes up here or UW goes down there. What, what do you anticipate it'll be like down at Pfizer Forum for, you know, as your team, you know, with your team being the visitor? Uh, I would expect people down there with uh, with whatever that stuff is that you put on your windows that uh, the you know that says that you're supporting and exciting a, a, a team. Maybe some streamers on the back. Uh, I would expect a lot of tailgating. Uh, it, it's uh, you know I think the bar scene around there is pretty cool. I think uh, I think we've got a great pep rally that I, people will be showing up. Uh, you know what else you got going on on a Wednesday night? Uh, that uh, you know, and this is this is a sports, this is a college sports town, but this is a sports state. And you, you know, uh, I I would guess if if you uh, uh, you put a ping pong match between the two, uh, there would probably be a record crowd showing up for for that. And uh, um, I, I think. Uh, you know, Pfizer Forum is is an unbelievable place, as you know, to uh, to watch a sporting event. I, I I think not only will that place be packed, I think it'll be energetic, and uh, I would guess uh, they'd be selling a lot of spotted cow and lining kugels the night before, the, the, right beforehand.